Today we're going to be manufacturing some sweet rolls here in the Dutch oven. And we're going to take a couple shortcuts to make things life a little easier for you if you were out tailgate camping. And uh, this is a great dish and we're going to be uh, walking you through it. Because sometimes you can't make uh, dough from scratch out in the boonies unless you're on the Chisholm Trail or something. But this is more like the Sierra Trail or the Joshua Tree Trail or something. So we're getting the charcoal going and we'll give you some more details as time goes on. The ingredients in this recipe are real easy. You simply take a quarter pound of butter, the uh, quarter, one full stick, throw it in the Dutch oven, and then you take a half a cup of brown sugar and you get it in the warm Dutch oven and you melt it down. You get however much many walnuts you want, crush them up, or pecans, the nuts of your flavor, sufficient to cover the bottom of the Dutch oven that you're using. You would raise the total amount of all of these things. For example, a 14-inch Dutch oven is twice the capacity of a 10, so you would simply double the amount. Also, things you can add to the, the, the topping, which is on the bottom, you can add maple syrup or a dash of cinnamon or whatever you'd like, but those are just the, the basic aspects of it. Then once it's very well melted and the, the thing's up and moving, you take out the um, your canned biscuits. We use a, a certain nationally advertised brand that we like that works pretty well. And for this smaller Dutch oven, uh, it'll take the, the entire can of 10, 10 smaller ones. Um, it'll fit in there nicely. If you have a larger Dutch oven, like a 14 inch, you can take the, the full size grands. They fit very well also. So right now, just for the sake of the smaller Dutch oven, uh, for what we're doing here. Uh, the most common size in Dutch ovens is a 10 or a 12, and we just happen to have a 10 here today, uh, as opposed to the 14 we have at home. Okay. What we're doing now is adding some charcoal to the, to the fire, because with this particular recipe, you'll need a sustained heat for roughly 20 minutes, depending upon your altitude and so forth. Uh, what we've got here is an old wash tub, throwing some dirt in it, this will act as a windbreak, and also it doesn't burn the parking lot where we are. And so what we're doing is we're going to get this going here, and uh, we're just kind of waiting for a minute. And with this particular recipe, we've taken the liberty of prefabricating our, all our dry ingredients. And so we're ready to essentially go. And when we get to, uh, into the recipe, we'll do some more explanation. Okay, our coals look about ready to go. We're going to spit them out here real quick like and kind of get them going. Being careful where to put this hot object. Okay, what we're going to do right now is put in some of our ingredients. I'm going to start with uh, the brown sugar and the butter. And we're not, we haven't put the uh, Dutch oven in the flame quite yet. Because once you do, it starts happening pretty quick. So we take, this is the real butter. And this recipe, it doesn't matter if it's unsalted or semi-organic or name your poison. We're going to put it on the fire here real quick. Now that's more fire than we're going to need, but we're just going to do this to kind of warm the thing up real quick and get it going. And this is a genuine Green River knife. Also, we're adding our brown sugar at this point, so it all starts to melt being careful not to get the plastic bag next to the charcoal. Okay, what we're doing now is we're going to arrange eight coals here on the bottom. That's a pretty good starting point, but of course you want to be monitoring the situation. And we're going to put several on the top. I haven't bothered to count, you just cover the lid. Because when we put the uh, biscuits in there, the temperature of the uh, contents is going to drop. So we want to maintain a good heat. So you get... okay. 
butter's been melting this whole time. We need to make some effort to get the Dutch oven itself level. Now it looks like we got it pretty level. Here's where some prefabrication is going to be helpful. Now depending upon the number of people you're going to serve and the size of your Dutch oven, the nationally advertised prefabricated biscuits here come in two sizes. So for the smaller Dutch oven here, and for the sake of ease, we're going to use the smaller of the size. Uh, if you were using a larger oven, like a 16 or a uh, 14 inch, you could use the larger one here. But for the smaller oven, we're going to use these because we want a little bit of space for the uh, wonderful brown sugar butter ooze to ooze between the biscuits. So that's where we're at right now. At some point it's always good to check your watch because this will take about 15 to 20 minutes. Need to be checking at the five minute mark to see how things are doing. Something of this nature, it's better to just simply have good coverage. The precise number is not that important, just that you have good coverage on the top. Because heat rises, the uh, effect on the bottom is greater. Okay, uh, as threatened, we're now at the five minute mark. And with Dutch oven cooking, even though it works out very well and slow and easy, you snooze, you lose. You can. If you don't mind the situation, you can wind up with one aspect of it completely raw, the other of it incinerated. So we're going to check it and rotate it. Check underneath. Things are cooking really good. It looks like it's a little hot actually, so I'm going to reduce the heat on the bottom. Okay folks, what we've just done is we've monitored the situation with the temperature. Um, I learned the hard way once, my early, the first time we took this Dutch oven out, back in 19... <coughs> <coughs> Uh, found out two very important lessons. One, you have to watch the heat because where we were there was a steady breeze blowing and we had a pineapple upside down cake that on the up breeze side was absolutely still aqueous, raw, and the other side was okay. And then we also found out that you should not cook a pineapple upside down cake in something you just cooked a whole load of enchiladas in. It just simply not done as the British would say. Through the miracle of digital photography and television. We're going to check again. These beasts look like they're about done and we're going to flip them over. We're just about ready to flip our contents over here and what we've done is we're letting this cool a little bit so it kind of lets it get happy. And then what I've done is I put out a uh, an old uh, cookie sheet slash pizza pan, put some foil on top and we're going to flip it over to there. So we're kind of letting things cool off for just a second so it's, it's not completely incendiary. In the finest of redneck traditions, in tailgate camping, we're prepared here. What I've done is I've laid the towel out there on the tailgate, and I've got our uh, pizza pan that's lined with foil ready there, and we're gonna take it, we're gonna flip it over onto here, hopefully not incurring any uh, third degree burns. So we'll give it a moment to uh, let all the wonderful ooze go down over the top of the biscuits. Okay, here, folks, here goes a whole lot of nothing. Uh, it cannot be emphasized enough to be careful at this point. Typically, I like to use oven gloves, but uh, we didn't bring some today. Let me pick it up a little bit by one lid, and it's not one to come out. So we'll turn it around a little bit. Here we go. Not a food network presentation quality here, but the scouts will love it. 